OK, in this session, I want to demonstrate queues and stacks and particularly using C++ code to code something that demonstrate how a queue and how a stack works. So what I have on screen at the minute is the codechef.com slash IDE website. I sent you a link to this uh, a couple of weeks ago in an email. It allows you to compile some code and run it and see, see the output of it. So I'm also going to look at the, the information that I sent. So from here, this was the task worksheet 4.8 document that I sent to demonstrate these data structures of queues and stacks. And within it, it's got code for C++. Um, it also has code for, if you scroll further down, you can see it's got code for C Sharp as well. Both, both work in the same way. I'm going to use the C++ option. So what I do, I load up the worksheet. I load up the worksheet, and you can see the C++ code there. And all I simply do is just highlight all the code, and that's the code finishes there. So I highlight all the code with the mouse, right-click and copy, go back to my code chef website and then I highlight the code that's already there because you want to just use your own code from the worksheet and I highlight that code and then I press control and V control V or you can right click and paste and it does it does the same thing now as you can see the code has now appeared in the C++ compiler so you need to make sure you're using C++ code in the C++ compiler so that code's going in there now, and it's got the code that, that demonstrates um, a queue. Now, to make this work and to make this be effective, you have to customise the input, because if you just run the programme now, it won't have any input. It'll just look round and won't work. So you have to click the custom input button first, and then you have to simulate the input that you, you got, you're going to go through. Now, you can just put one bit of input in, run the programme, go back to this and, and do it at various points in time. But I'm just going to go through um, various bits of input. So in the code, I can see that it asks you to enter one, two, or X, okay, in the menu here. If you type one, you then add someone's name. You're going to be asked to enter a person's name, and then they'll be added to the queue. So I'm going to have one, and then type person one. So let's do person A. Let's do letters. One is person A. Then I'm going to add someone else to the queue. So I'm going to add person B. Then the third person I'm going to ask is to add this person C. So one is to add, a, add to the queue tail and then the name of the person. And then one person D. So I'm going to add four people to the queue to start with. So four people added to the queue. I'm then going to use the option to remove from the queue head. So I'm going to do type in two and then do two. So I'm going to remove two people from the queue head. Now this being um, a queue simulator, then queues are first in and first out. So I would expect person A and person B to be the two people that are removed from the queue that would leave as person C and person D. OK, I'm then going to add in someone else to the queue. This time it's going to be person E. So at this point in time, there should be three people in the queue, person C, D and E. And then I'm going to remove those people. So we remove person three people, one, two, three. And then I'm actually going to try and remove a fourth time because there's a bit of code here that says, um, sorry, queue is empty, cannot remove anyone. Because if you try and remove people when your queue is empty, you want a bit of code. You shouldn't crash the program. It should have a bit of code that tells you the queue is empty. You need to add someone. So I'm going to remove everyone there, get that little error message that tells me my queue is empty. So I'm moving four times. So the three people are in the queue, C, D and E, three people are remaining. And then try and remove someone else and get the error message that the queue is empty. And then I will end the program there by keying in uh, X. OK, as it's got there in the code, X will exit the program. OK, so I've now put my input in. So that's my dummy run of what I'm going to put in the program. And then now click on Run. And it queues the code to, uh, to the website to run it. And then you'll see a screen will appear underneath, which just confirms the input that's been put in. So that's similar to what I've typed in up here. This is the input that's gone into the program, and this is the program running. So this is what you would see on screen if you were running the program in, in real time. So I added, I typed in one first, then I added person A. There's now one person in the queue. Typed one, added person B. There's now two people in the queue. Typed one, added person C. Three people in the queue. 
ticked one, added person D, four people in the queue. So far, so good. It's removing the queue bit that's now going to show you how queues work. So as I said, queues work on first in, first out basis. So I removed someone from the queue and it removed person A because they were first in. They were at the front of the queue. Three people in the queue. Removed again and you can see person B has been removed because B moved to the front of the queue. First in, first out. Uh, I've now added someone else in. So I've added person E in. So there's three people in the queue. Person C, person D, person E. And I'm now going to start removing those that are left. So person C is at the front of the queue. So they remove first, then person D, then person E, the third person to add in. Tells me there's no one in the queue. Let me try and remove someone else. And it gives me the error message correctly. Sorry, queue is empty, cannot remove anyone. So it doesn't crash the program. It just lets me know the queue is empty. That's all working fine. So I press X and gives me a little friendly goodbye message. So that's how queues work. First in, first out basis. Uh, I'm now going to do the same, but this time I'm going to look at stacks. So again, using C++, so I'm going back to the worksheet 4.8, and now I'm going to look at this second bit of code here, how to use stacks. Okay, so I copy the code out from the um, from the worksheet down to there. There's the end. Right click, copy. Go back to my um, IDE, and then I'm going to press Control and A, because that highlights all that code there from the, the Q code. And then I do Control V, or I could do right click and paste. And now that's pasted in the new code that I've just put in. So this is the stack code here. Now just having a look at the code on screen. Again, it's similar. So one will push someone onto the stack. So add someone to your stack. Two will pop them from the stack. So remove them from the stack and X will exit it. OK, so again, you type one, you add a person's name, they get pushed onto the stack and it will tell you how many people are on the stack. If you type two, it will pop that person from the stack. And then if you have try and remove from an empty stack, it gives me the message. Sorry, stack is empty, cannot pop anymore. OK, and then an X and a friendly goodbye, similar to the Q. Now, with stacks, stacks operate slightly differently because queues were first in and first out stacks are last in and first out. So I'm going to use the same input as before. So exactly the same time, I'm going to add in four people, person A, B, C and D. So there are four people in the stack. Pop the stack twice. Now, if it's last in, first out, then D should be removed first. Then C should be removed first. Then I'm going to add someone into the stack. So add person E into the stack. So there'll be three people in the stack, A, B and E. And then do some popping. So pop person E should go first then person B, then person A would be the last person. If I do the pop the fourth time, it should give me there a message that the stack is empty and then X to exit the program. OK, so custom input. I'll use the same input as before. So it's the same input last time, but we'll just see a slightly different output from a stack. So I run the code. It will give me the output down below. So it just confirms the input that I've put in, adding people to the stack, adding four people, removing two, adding a, another person, person E, then removing four people to empty the stack in the program. And we can see the output that we would have on screen here. So we add one person to the stack, that person A has been pushed onto it, then person B has been pushed onto the stack, two people, person C has been pushed on, three people, person D has been pushed on, four people. I'm now going to pop someone from the stack and you can see person D is the first person popped because it's last in, first out. So person D was last in, so they're the first out of that stack. Pop to another pop, and this time person C has been popped because they were the last in and the people left in the stack. There's now two people left, person A and person B. I'll add in someone, so I'm going to add in person E to the stack, which now gives us three people in the stack, A, B and E. And I now do some popping. So person E gets popped first because it's last in, first out. Then person B is popped because they were the second person in. And finally, person A because they were last in. Uh, they were first in, so they're the last person out. And then I try and pop the stack one more time. And it just lets me know, sorry, the stack is any in, empty. Cannot pop anyone. That's great. And then finally, X to exit the program. And it's a nice little goodbye message. So that's the demonstration of using the C code, C++, to demonstrate queues and stacks. So 
it'd be good to if you look at the email I sent, look at worksheet 4.8, copy the code, paste, go into codechef.com IDE, make sure that C++ is there, paste the code into this part of the screen here, put your input in that you want, click custom input, put your input here, run the program, and you can check the stacks. Okay, and you can go back and change the code, etc. Okay.